Okay. Okay, let us continue. Um, so there was one um, question uh, during the break, like whether, like how can students find um, teammates for the competition when they have never met other students? Uh, so that was also another uh, point um, that we, we, the instructors and TAs discussed among ourselves. So you might have more chance to interact with the instructor and the TAs, but not with other students. So we have been planning to host a gather town event for the course. Uh, so for people who haven't uh, tried gather town, I would encourage you to go check gather.town. So it's, it's like a virtual event where you can walk around the space and meet others and like talk to others. So like we have plans to host like a one gather town like very soon. Uh, and if it is, a successful social event for the course, then probably we would consider doing a few more gather town throughout the semester. Uh, so that that kind of simulates the classroom conversations that you would have before or after the class. Uh, um, uh, like it need not be completely technical, like it could be a social event too. So we will do that uh, soon and I will send you the information. Uh, and there were a lot of questions about grade scope and everything. Um, so don't worry about all these tools. Like we will send detailed instructions for everything separately this week. So we're just getting started. Uh, so, so don't worry too much if you don't know how to access grade scope immediately or so on. Okay, so let us start um, the second se session. Um, just give me one second. I'm going to share my board. Okay. So, okay, so let's begin. Um, so I hope I have convinced yourself with the videos and uh, pictures that like machine learning is something like what considering, right, like so, and, and learning. There are a lot of practical applications. So, so we're going to get started with the course seriously now. Okay, so what is machine learning? So machine learning is basically a study of algorithms that can improve their performance. Let's call it P, okay, at some task. let's say T, with experience E. Okay, so I borrowed this definition uh, from the classical uh, book on machine learning by Tom Mitchell. So the, 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 the definition is this, like, so this is basically a study of algorithms that can improve their performance in some task with some experience, okay? So in that sense, the learning task can be formalized with a couple of P, T, and E, okay? So we are going to see some examples. Okay, so let's start with the standard spam classification example. So the task here is I'm interested in classifying whether the email that I received is a spam or not, okay? Now, what would be the performance that I'm expecting from a system that can do spam classification, right? So the performance in this case would be accuracy in prediction. Like I want a system which is highly accurate in predicting whether something is a spam or not. Now, what is the ex like experience for the system? The experience for the system is basically a set of example emails, okay? labeled as spam or not spam. So basically, I will collect a bunch of examples, uh, spam or not spam, and as I show more such examples to the system, the system should be able to predict whether something is a spam or not with a very high accuracy. Okay, now this is the learning task. So now let us look at a few more examples of learning tasks. So the second task we are going to consider is credit card 
fraudulent transaction okay um detection in this case i am interested in detecting whether this particular transaction is a fraudulent transaction or or a legitimate transaction okay so the performance here is again accuracy right like i want system which is highly accurate the experience here is basically a bunch of historical transactions okay and these transactions are marked as legitimate transaction or fraudulent transaction is that clear okay so now we are going to look at um few more examples uh but i'm just i'm just trying to add a new page okay okay so we are going to look at few more examples the third example that we are going to look at is the one that we have already seen in the first section which is playing the game of chess okay now what is the performance measure in this case like so what what is that i expect from a system which can play chess play, play the game of chess right like so the performance here is basically the number of games won by the system and the experience in this case is set of game trajectories from expert players i collect a bunch of games played by the expert players and i'm going to use this to train a system which can actually uh, play this game okay so now these are some of the example learning tasks okay so i would like to introduce the problem of prediction which is one of the central problems in machine learning okay so so what is prediction the idea of prediction is given some input like i want to predict an outcome or some output right like so so in this case like i have a system okay and it receives some input x okay and it has to make some prediction let's call it output y okay so the x could also be called as the observation to the system by observing something the system has to make a prediction y okay and we would often call the system as an agent or a model and they are all the same okay so now this course will focus a lot on prediction now let's look at some of the example prediction problems okay so now the first example that i would like to give is given the size of the house let's say we are interested in predicting the selling price of the house okay now what is x in this problem in this problem the input is size of the house right so if you have issues with my handwriting mention it in the chat i will try to be more legible so why is the selling price right okay so now let us look at some more examples now the second example is given the current stock price okay of a company i am interested in predicting the same after 10 minutes okay now what is x here so x is basically the stock price at time t right now why in this case is stock price at time t plus 10 okay let's look at few more examples now given an image i'm interested in predicting the object in the image okay in this prediction problem x is basically an image 
you could give it as pixels if you want. Okay, uh, let's say I have an image which has a bunch of birds in it. Okay, now why in this case is basically an object name. Potentially from a predefined set of objects. Okay, so for example, I could have a bunch of categories already dog, cat, birds, flight, and let's say ball. Okay, now given these five categories, I'm interested in predicting whether this particular image is uh, like is what? In this case, it's, it happens to be a bird. Is that clear? Okay, so now let's look at another example. In this case, given an image of a handwritten digit, okay, I'm interested in predicting the digit. So X in this case is an image. This image could have a digit, let's say seven. Y in this case is answer number seven, right? So now in this case, the number of op options to predict is predetermined, right? Like, so it's going to be one of zero, one, two, nine, right? Okay, so one last example. So there is a reason I introduce a lot of examples. If it is boring, please bear with me for a couple of minutes. So the last example is given the temperature, and maybe humidity and the wind status, okay? So I, I'm interested in predicting whether it will rain or not, okay? X in this case is a bunch of attributes like the temperature, the humidity and the wind, right? Y in this case is a simple yes or no question. Okay, so now we have seen a bunch of examples of prediction problems, right? Like, so now if you look at these example prediction problems, some of them have, like, they, they have different characteristics. So for example, if you look at the first example, in this case, you are interested in predicting the selling price, which is a real number, right? It could be 40,000, it could be 50,000. It's a real number. And if you look at the second, Example, again, this is a number, uh, but in the case of third example, you can see that the, in, the object that you are interested in predicting is a categorical object. So there is a bunch of categories and you need to choose one of those categories, right? So is the case for the fourth. Even though it's numbers, it's actually a bunch of fixed categories. Uh, and you also have other types of problems where the answer is a simple yes or no. Right, so now let's try to categorize these types of prediction problems. Okay, so for example, in the examples one and two, Y was a real number, right? So problems where you are interested in predicting a real number has a name, it's called regression. Okay, on the other hand, we have the second type of prediction problems like examples three, four, five, right? In these examples, Y is categorical. To bring back those examples, in the third example, Y belong to dog or cat or so on, right? In the fourth example, Y belong to zero, one to nine, right? And the, th the last example, why belongs to yes or no, right? So when you have a prediction problem where the target is a categorical object, okay, we are going to call such problems as classification problems. Is that clear? So now depending upon the object that you're trying to predict, uh, it could be a regression problem or a classification problem. A problem is regression, like if you are predicting a real value, it is classification if you are predicting a categorical value. Now, the simplest form of classification is like what you see here, which is the binary classification. In this case, the answer is a simple yes or no. 
Is that clear? Okay, so if you have any questions, you can post it in the chat. I am looking at the chat in another window. Um, okay, so now that we have introduced classification and regression, like the two types of prediction problems, so let's try to formalize the task of prediction a bit more, okay? So prediction task, so what is prediction? Given some input, x, okay? The goal is to make a good prediction of output y, okay? And we are going to denote the prediction by y hat. So y is the true output that you want to predict and y hat is your system's prediction, okay? So x can be a vector. So x could be x1, x, you can have multiple outputs, like inputs to the system. So in this case, we have P features, okay? Now, y, on the other hand, it can be a scalar or a vector. Well, X can also be a scalar if required. Okay, so to introduce the notations, Y is the actual target that we are interested in predicting, okay? And Y hat is models prediction, okay? And I also mentioned briefly uh, when we started that like we would often learn these prediction tasks by showing examples, right? So now that is what we will call as supervised learning. Okay, um, so what is supervised learning? Now given a training set, Let's say I have a bunch of n examples, okay? So xi, yi, for i is equal to one to n, okay? Of n data points, the goal here is to learn a prediction function, let's call it f, which takes x as input and makes some prediction in y, okay? Such that, Given a new x, f can accurately predict the corresponding y. Okay, um, now the most important part of this problem formulation is given a bunch of examples, we want to learn this function f, which given a new x, can accurately predict the corresponding y. It is not interesting if the system is predicting y accurately for examples that you have already seen. So what is more interesting is a system which can actually make accurate predictions for examples that you have never seen before, right? So now this whole concept of learning from a bunch of examples and be able to make better predictions for unseen examples is what we will call as generalization. Okay, so a system can, like we can say that this, this particular machine learning system is generalizing to new examples, only if it can learn from some examples and, and make accurate predictions for unseen instances, okay? So the prediction function, which we call as F, right, is useful only if it can make accurate predictions for unseen X, okay? So we will call this as generalization to unseen instances. And Generalization to unseen instances is a key requirement for any machine learning algorithm. So like, otherwise there is no use in this algorithm. Like if it is just going to 
make accurate predictions only for examples that you have seen so far. Okay, okay. So now that we have introduced uh, like what is prediction and like two types of prediction problems, classification and regression, uh, we have also seen supervised learning. Um, let, let's start with an example problem. Okay, so, so we were abstract so far. Uh, let's start with a very simple practical application. Okay, so we're going to start with a very simple example, which is housing price prediction. That we have seen already, right? So we're, let's take the standard example that people use, which is housing price prediction in Portland. Oregon. Okay, so the data set comes from Portland. So the, the problem is this, there is this person, John, who lives in Portland and he wants to sell his house. Okay, and he wants to know what is a good market price would be. So how can one find the best market price for the house, right? So one way to tackle this problem is to first collect a bunch of examples of the previous sales, right? So you could collect historic house like housing prices like the, like based on the previous chains and use that to make a prediction on like what could be the reasonable price for your house right so now is this a classification problem or a regression problem well i should have had a poll i forgot to put a poll so is it, maybe you can type in the chat i will see it like is this a classification problem or a regression problem Okay, a lot of you say regression. This is regression because the prediction is on a real value, right? Like so the house price. Okay, now in this case, we are going to consider a very simple data set to begin with, okay? There's only one scalar feature yet, which is the size of the house. We are going to consider the size of the house, let's say in square foot, okay? And output is going to be the price of the house. Okay, so we have a data set of 47 such records. Okay, we are, I'm not going to write all the 47, just to give you an example. If you have a house which is 2104 square feet, it was sold for 399,900. Okay, if you have a house 4,600 square feet, it was sold for 329,900, and so on. Okay, so now we have a bunch of let's say 47 data points. Now we want to train a system by using these examples so that it can make an accurate prediction for my house that I'm planning to set, right? So now the first step that we should do is to actually take the data and split it into training data and test data, okay? Because remember that the goal of machine learning is to test the generalization capability. So if you train on the data and test on the same data, then you are not measuring the generalization, right? So, so what we will do is we will use the training data to train the model, okay? And we will use the test data to test the generalization of the model. Okay, so remember that this test data is actually a proxy for the true performance of the model. So ideally I want to train the system and then show it some unseen examples after deployment to understand like, like, like uh, 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 to understand how is the generalization, right? So, so we are kind of simulating what will happen after learning uh, by keeping a separate test data which will act like a proxy. So now it is very important that you never show this test data to your model during training. Right? If you show this test data to the model during training, then it has already seen these examples, so they don't become a pro. They are not unseen examples or a proxy anymore. Is that clear? Okay, so now let's 
say that I took this 47 examples, I divided it into 30 training examples and 17 test examples. Okay, now we are going to visualize, since it is just a 1D uh, task, we are going to visualize the task. So this is how it looks like, okay. In this case, x-axis is the input, the size of the house, and y-axis is the price of the house, which is the output, okay. So now this gives us a, a decent idea of, like for example, uh, okay, can we guess what would be the price of a 3,500 square foot house? Some example, some answers in the chat, please. A guess of what would be the price of a 3,500 square feet apartment. Okay, so approximately 500K to 550K, probably 600K. Okay, now the question is, how did you come up with this guess? Right, so, so, so what, what, what is the strategy that you used to come up with this guess? Okay, so some of you say linear regression, uh, which is exactly what uh, we are going to study as the first model. Okay, so we are going to start with our first machine learning algorithm. Okay, consider this really simple model, which is y hat is equal to w0 plus w1x. Okay, now this is an equation of a linear line, right? So now what kind of lines can this model fit? Okay, so what kind of curves can this model fit? Okay, as some of you say it's a linear equation, so this can only fit lines. Right, like you could fit any type of line that you want in this particular data set, right? Like so, so to give you some example, let's say I have, okay, let's consider W0 is equal to 1.5 and W1 is equal to zero, okay? Now in this case, the line would look something like this, okay, so assuming, Okay, maybe my axis is not accurate, uh, but it will look something like this, right? So similarly, if I have an example, W0 is equal to zero, W1 is equal to 0 0.5, okay? In this case, the line would look something like this, okay? Now I can give you another example. So let's say, W0 is equal to one, W1 is equal to 0 0.5. So what does this mean? This means that the intercept is at one. So the line should start from here and go like this, right? Okay, so now I want you to appreciate. Uh, can I stop you for just one question? Yeah. There's a question for what, what happens if there is no correlation between X and Y? Okay, so that's a good question. So um if your data is completely random there is no correlation at all then of course like there's no use in uh like learning an algorithm because even a random like an agent which can predict randomly can do like you can it's very hard to beat an agent which just predicts randomly in such tasks right like so but often all the real life applications has some statistical regularities and uh, our algorithms are essentially trying to capture these statistical regularities. Okay, that's a good question. Uh, okay, so I wanted to understand the significance of W0 in this equation. If I did not have W0, then all my lines will always pass through the origin, right? So if I don't have W0, then any line that I learn with a model which is like just W, like y hat is equal to W1x, it has to pass through the origin, right? So uh, like, so now we have two types of models. The, the first, let's call this as model one, okay? And I'm going to call model two as simply y hat is equal to W1x, okay? Now the question is, which model should we prefer? 
M1 or M2? Again, you can type in your chat. So most of the answers I see is M1. So why do we need to choose M1, right? Like because M1 has more flexibility when compared to M2, right? So M1 can model a, like a, cla a larger class of lines when compared to M2, which can only model a very specific restricted class of lines, right? Like so in some sense, M1 is much more expressive than M2, okay? Okay, so now let's look at the equation again, again, so the equation is y hat is equal to w0 plus w1x, right? So now these w0 and w1, oh, okay, so I was talking about the significance of w0 and then I forgot what to say. So this w0 is called as bias in the machine learning literature. So, so often when you write an equation for a linear model or a nonlinear model, like you would add this bias because this bias gives more flexibility to the system. Okay, so now these W0 and W1, right? Like, so we can call those as weights of the system or in a more general way, parameters of the system. Okay, so we have a machine learning system or an agent or a model and W0 and W1 are the parameters of the model, okay? So we could put them together, group them together and just call it W. So W is basically W0 and W1, okay? So now if I want to describe my model in a succinct way, I could just say that the Y hat of, the model takes X as input and it has some parameters W, okay? Now in this notation, this is the input to the system and this is the parameter of the system, okay? And this model is basically W0 plus W1X, okay? Okay, so now the next question is how are we going to learn these W0 and W1, okay? So how can we learn the parameters W0, W1. So, can, like, do you want to answer? Okay, so it's nice that everyone is using the chat, but I would also like to see some faces if you can raise hand and give answers. Okay, so does anyone want to answer? So how can we learn these parameters W0 and W1? Mm, Abdul, I think if someone raises hand, you can see that in the chat, as in not in the participants list. Yes, of course, yeah. Okay, so there is one answer which says, try several values of X, you minimize some error, okay, by training the model using input. Okay, so some of you have already seen linear regression, so you give the direct answer. Uh, no, wants to answer. Uh, okay. Mujtaba, you can talk now. Hey, Mujtaba, you are unmuted, you can talk. I think he has to unmute by himself. Okay, maybe he needs to figure out how to do that. Okay, okay. so there, I think the general consensus here is to define a goal to achieve and somehow train the system to achieve that goal, right? Like, okay, so the first step here is to define an objective function that the model should achieve. Okay, and we already have the objective, right? Like we already have the objective for the prediction problem. What is it? We want the Y hat to be as close as possible to Y, right? Now this is our objective. Now this objective, can be solved 
by achieved by minimizing the following error function okay so i'm going to define an error function uh, which is let's call it e of w which is basically summation over all the training examples i have what is the model's prediction okay minus the actual prediction whole square and i'm going to put 1 by 2 um, i will tell you why there is a 1 by 2 later okay so now what does this error function mean so this error function basically means when this error function is zero it means that for all the n training examples model's prediction is exactly same as the true target right okay so now there is a name for this error function so this is called least squares error function okay now the this is models prediction okay and this is the target and n is basically the number of training instances okay so now let's try to visualize this error function so now i have x and y okay so let's say for every x i have some corresponding y okay now these are my examples now if i consider a line which is like this okay now in this case what is the error the error okay so what is okay let's consider this example like in this case the model is predicting this particular blue point while the real target is this particular red point right so now this gap is the error similarly this gap is the error and this gap is the error right so now what this error function is trying to achieve is it is trying to achieve a line it's trying to find a line such that it minimizes this gap okay now i'm just going to expand the error function again so the error function is given by 1 over 2 summation over n is equal to 1 to n okay what is model's prediction in in our case we have a simple linear model so it's going to be w0 plus w1 over xn this is my model's prediction for the nth example minus yn which is the target true target so we are interested in minimizing the gap uh, but we are interested in minimizing the square of the gap okay so now my objective which was written in plain english before can be represented mathematically as minimize e of w with respect to w okay so now find a w which has minimum e of w is that clear okay so now the next question is how to find this minimum right so how to find this minimum so now if you look at this error function this is actually a quadratic function of w right so the function is given by the function is it, it's basically a function of w0 square and w1 square right like so this error function this error function is a quadratic function of the parameters okay so we know how the quadratic function would look like it would look like something like this right so and from this function you can see that there is only one minimum right there is only one minimum so your basic calculus lessons will tell you that at the minimum the derivative of the function with respect to the parameters w will be zero so basically if i differentiate my error function with respect to w it will be zero at the minimum okay is that clear so 
again, like we are in a quadratic function setting, right? Like, so this is a quadratic function. So the derivatives of E of W with respect to W will be linear functions of W. So the derivatives of E of W with respect to W will be linear in the elements of W. Okay, and in this case, there's a unique solution for minimizing E of W. Minimizing E of W has a unique solution, which can be obtained in closed form, okay? So we are not going to solve this equation today. So, uh, but we just know that there is a closed form solution for this particular uh, objective function that we have, right? So now if I solve this objective function and find those W, uh, I will end with a line like this, okay? So now in this case, again, this is X, this is Y, and you can see that by solving the objective function, which is to minimize the gap between uh, the prediction and uh, the target, uh, this is the line that we have obtained. Like on the other hand, just to give you an example, we could consider this line. Okay, now just by looking at this figure, you can guess that the error by the red line is larger than the error by the blue line, right? So for example, if you consider this data point, the error by the blue line is this. On the other hand, the error by the red line is this much. Right, so, so you can see that the red line is not a good line and you can find this good line, which is the blue line uh, by minimizing the objective that we define. So maybe we will stop here and uh, now that we have introduced like a basic linear model for doing regression, uh, we will delve into the details uh, in the next lecture. So. So we're gonna stop here. Uh, so the lecture notes are already available in the, in, in, the, in the web page. I will also put the slides in the web page. I will also be putting these scribbles that I am writing in the class in the web page. So uh, you, you will have access to all of those details. Uh, okay, so I will stop the recording.